On this portion of the morning show today from WRC Radio, our guest is Sean Murphy Lopez. Sean is a Democratic candidate for the State Assembly in the 49th Assembly District. I asked Sean what motivated him to run for the State Assembly. The main thing that motivated me to run, Ron, is I know how much rural areas struggle, and not just in Richland County. You know, this is true all over southwest Wisconsin and really across rural America. And I grew up in a, in a rural part of western Iowa and northeast Missouri, both out in the country and in a small town. And what really attracted Aaron and I to move to Richland County was just how beautiful it was, how diversified the farming um, is, how, how great of small villages and towns we have here. And... I got involved on the Richland County Board two and a half years ago, and one of the main reasons is because I wanted to see our area get revitalized. Uh, And I mean mainly our economy, but that also trickles down to our schools um, and to our main streets and our farms. And on the Richland County Board, you know, we have somewhat limited abilities to um, incentivize different sorts of behavior. You know, we're really an arm of the government, uh, the state government, rather, the county government is. And the state government, I think, could be doing more to incentivize people to open up new businesses in rural parts of the state. And I think that's going to have a really big effect on our uh, school enrollments, which are currently declining in most of the school districts in Richland County. Uh, It would also make a big difference in uh, the business life we've got. You know, if we're incentivizing people to open up new businesses, you know, that's going to change the feeling that we have about our rural community. We've got so much good stuff going on here, uh, but we really need the state to be a more active, strong partner. If elected to the Assembly, what would your first and greatest priority be, Sean? One of my top priorities is going to be figuring out how we can translate those incentives into uh, something that the state has power over. So one idea I have is to take the manufacturing tax credit, which takes about 1% of all of our state income tax and sales tax revenues that go to the state right now. It's a, a little over $200 million a year. And carve out a good piece of that for rural areas. People opening up small businesses, middle class and working class people opening up small businesses in these rural areas, whether it's a grocery store in Richland Center uh, or a new butcher shop um, in in Grant County uh, where there currently, you know, isn't a butcher shop. You know, how can we, how can the state uh, give tax credits to people who want to make those investments, whether they take their savings or take out a loan? Let's give those people a credit on their state income taxes instead of these wealthy manufacturers who are making more than 250 grand a year. Let's have more of our tax money come back to uh, the little person like us, the little guy, the little gal in these rural areas. The 49th Assembly District has some of the best farms in the state of Wisconsin, Sean. What would you do as a state assembly uh, assemblyman uh, to strengthen agriculture, to support and maintain, ag- maintain agriculture here in southwest Wisconsin? You know, I would give our farmers a, an amazing grade for the work that they've done over the decades. They've had to deal with so many challenges, not only with typical challenge of, challenges of farming like weather, but also, you know, in recent decades uh, with wild fluctuations in our markets. You know, our farmers do a superb job of figuring out how to make a living. Uh, Oftentimes they've had to get bigger. They've had to get involved in specialty crops. Um, They've done a great job. What hasn't been working very well is policies coming down, especially from the federal government, but also some state government policies. So I don't really see that the government today is looking out for the small and the mid-sized farmers. Um, they could be doing more to hold uh, big corporations, uh, mega co-ops, um, some of these checkoff groups accountable 
for the amount of money that they're taking away uh, from the income of farmers. So I really want the state justice department specifically to get more involved in holding some of these groups accountable. And then also we have a state ag department here in Wisconsin. Those grants that they give out once in a while, those do come through. There was a big, big push for uh, grants pre-2015 to expand dairy operations. You know, let's make sure instead of making our farms bigger and bigger that we're trying to help out those small and beginning farmers that are having the, the hardest time getting into agriculture. That, that's how I think the state could be helping uh, to strengthen our agricultural economy. Have your constituents, potential constituents, Sean, talked to you about the partisanship that seems to be a concern of so many people today? That is the top thing I hear when I knock on doors. So I've knocked on about 8,000 doors at this point all over the district. Um, And that's all of Grant County and then the western half of Richland County. And the top thing I hear from people is that they want their elected officials to be working for the people and not the party. We're this really independent-minded area where we voted for Obama twice by large margins. We, bo- we voted for Trump um, at the same time um, by not quite as large of a margin, but pretty high. We've also voted for Walker and Evers. So given that independence that we have, I sense that what people really want in this area is a representative who's not always going to vote with his party. They want someone who is going to do what's best for the majority of people. And yes, they complain about the partisanship, but I've been so inspired by what people have told me about, you know, what do they want out of their politicians? You know, they're not just denigrating all of them. They're saying, you know, I remember this person. I remember Republican Dale Schultz and how, you know, he really worked together with such a great number of people. And they brought up several examples of politicians who they thought did a really good job. And I, I hope to do my best to be able to follow in some of those footsteps and, and not get too cornered into this uh, party politics stuff. And, and that's going to take some courage at certain points. You know, I'm not always going to be able to vote with my party if the people decide uh, to elect me. You feel that the state the legislature should be in session more, don't you? Oh, of course. You know, we we're one of it's something like 10 states that employs full time legislators. So we give our state legislators a healthy salary every year. It's a middle-class salary. Uh, They make about $25 an hour if you figure a 40-hour week over the course of a year, plus benefits. So I believe we should be expecting, you know, whether it's our current assembly representative or if it's me, if the people decide that I should go in there, that that, that anyone should be devoted to this job full-time. And to have a legislature that has not met Um, with any significance in the past six months, you know, who of us has gotten a six-month vacation, you know, from our jobs? And I'm not saying they haven't done anything. You know, I'm sure they've answered constituent calls. But the main work of a legislator or any elected official is going to meetings, considering um, the problems that we have and figuring out solutions to solve those problems. And we do that on the Richland County Board right now just because COVID hit didn't mean that the Richland County Board and all of its committees stopped meeting. We kept on with our regular work, and we added COVID, uh, the COVID response into it. So that's what we should be expecting our elected officials to do, in, in my opinion. Sean, what would you do as a state legislator to make sure that young people consider staying in southwest Wisconsin to develop their career and, and raise their family? Well, you know, the thing I heard when I was growing up, and like I mentioned, where, where I grew up, it was a similar rural atmosphere, was you got to go where the jobs are. You know, my, my dad encouraged me to go to the city so that I could get a good job. And I think a lot of people out in, in rural areas, are they're in that situation too. And that can be a hard thing to have to tell your kid, but it's also a very realistic thing for a farmer to tell uh, his son or his daughter. Um, or, you know, a mom might do the same thing. You know, I'm not just, just saying men would do that. So I think, I think first we got to change that conversation, but in order to do that, we got to provide some substance behind it. We need better jobs in these rural areas. And, um, you know, if, if people are making on average, uh, 10 or 12 or $14, that's, 
that's pretty challenging for people to really be able to pay their bills, raise a family, and then own a home and, and keep a roof over that home or put new siding on that home or put in a new septic system. So we really need to start having some tough conversations about how can we get those wages up um, so that we can tell our kids, hey, you know what, it's time to come back. we got good jobs here, these rural areas. We've got these you know, amazing schools, small class sizes, you know, a, a great volunteer-oriented community. Um, now we have jobs, too. So we've really got to focus on, on that job issue. And I, I think I saw one survey down at UW-Platteville that um, – 50% of the students wish they could stay here, but because of the lack of jobs, and um, it makes it a challenge. So, so we really need to pay attention to that. What are the most important environmental issues that face the 49th Assembly District and the state of Wisconsin, in your opinion, Sean? I'd, I'd say two, and I'd probably put them on priority level here, as I think the number one issue that we've got to deal with is um, our flooding. So we've had a good year, year and a half year, where we really haven't had many floods, which has been a relief for a lot of us. But we've, we've got to come up with ways to mitigate these big floods that are rolling through our valley communities. You know, Richland Center did a really great job of this 10 or 20 years ago um, by building a levee. And we're ne we need to look at that in a community like Viola as well. Um, and whether it's a levee or whether it's moving on several of the residents uh, and businesses. That really should be up to a local community, of course, but we've, we've got to take a look at that. And there are things that we do at the county. We've partnered with the federal government in past decades to build series of dams. Uh, for example, in the Mill Creek watershed, the county maintains uh, about 10 or 12 dams, and that has saved Boaz from many floods over the years. And we need to be looking more and more at that. But we also need to be honest about, you know, that this probably is climate change related, and we need to start as a state and, of course, as a country looking at that issue and, and, and how can we uh, become more environmentally friendly to reduce um, the peaks and some of those uh, natural disasters that are happening. The second environmental issue I'd say that we should be focusing on right now is our drinking water quality out in rural areas. And there, my, my biggest focus... And the biggest focus of the Richland County Board through the Land Conservation Committee has been to do more testing, to figure out where we have the drinking water quality issues. Um, having more data to start with is going to guide many of our decisions, and I don't want us to get too far into the weeds about what solutions to implement until we know where the problems are located and what are the sources of those problems. What proportion do they come from agriculture? versus sewer systems in cities versus septic systems out in the country. So we really need to get a better handle on that. Healthcare is such a large issue, Sean. What have constituents asked you, and what has your response been when they've said, what should our focus be for health care in Wisconsin? Right now, far, you know, far and above any other health care issue is COVID. As I knock on doors, that's the thing that's on the top of people's minds. And it's Wow, what a challenging thing, you know, to to live through a pandemic. And I think a lot of a lot of uh, our seniors they they know what this is like. You know, they went through polio and 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 potentially other things in the past. And then people, you know, in generations previous to those who are alive right now, of course, went through the flu pandemic in 1918. And and we just got to get a, a a more unified message on this. Um, yes, we should be debating you know, mask mandates and stay-at-home orders. There's nothing wrong with disagreeing over some of those issues, but we need to at least have the debates and then come up with a plan for what are we going to do. We need the legislature and the governor to be working together, not always agreeing, but coming up with a more unified message for us so that we don't go in these two totally different directions in our state, which is, you know, some people staying at home all the time and wearing masks everywhere they go and other people not doing anything. You know, never wearing a mask, not changing their behavior at all. We need we need more unity. We need more work to be done in the middle there. Sean, how do you look at the issue of police funding today, which has been talked about so much? I think that defunding the police is an overreach. Uh, I lived in Minneapolis for 10 years um, before we moved down here in 2014. 
And, um, you know, I, my heart goes out to that community up there and what they went through uh, over the past six months. But obviously we need our law enforcement. Who else are we going to call, you know, when we have an emergency, when we get in a car crash or, you know, when we have some sort of a personal trauma that we're going through where the police need to get involved. And if anything, my work on the Richland County Board has taught me that our police, our, our sheriff's department, they need more partnerships. They need more involvement from our mental health professionals and other people in our community to be partners with them. So instead of trying to shift funding away from one department and sending it to another, I think really the question is going to be more of how can we support our police uh, more. And we do have people of color who live in our community here in Richland County and also in Grant County, especially in Platteville. And I've listened to, to several of them, and I'm learning a lot um, about what it's like to be a person of color in rural Wisconsin. And, and I think we need to be listening to both sides. Um, I also went uh, for a ride along with one of the uh, deputies in the Richland County Sheriff's Department just to understand what they're going through. So listening, understanding, and then coming up with uh, some sort of a plan to improve safety um, for everybody, for both for both people of color and people in the law enforcement community, we need to continue to be improving safety. Is there a concluding remark or issue or summary that you'd like to share with listeners today, Sean? I just want to tell folks it'd be such an honor to serve you. It's I really like serving on the Richland County Board. I've, I've learned so much. People have, have taught me a lot about um, their, you know, their priorities and what they want to see for the future. Um, you know, it's also, I, I do want to address a little bit of the negativity that comes with a campaign sometimes, you know, it, it's, it can be hard to listen to, uh, negative campaign ads or read something in your mailbox that looks negative. And my focus really has been on, you know, we're not, I'm not always going to agree with my opponent on all the issues, but let's at least talk about those issues. And, you know, I'm not about going after someone's character. I'm, I'm more about going after what are the votes, um, what are the values, what are the issues that are important to people. And let's compare and contrast those so that folks can look at me versus my opponent. And, and um, sometimes that can be a little uncomfortable, but I think what people have really taught me as I go door to door is the people who have opened up to me, it's okay to talk about politics. You know, let's, but let's be respectful of each other. Let's, let's listen to uh, what the priorities of other people are and not just talk all the time. Let's, let's really understand. You know, I'm running as a Democrat, obviously. Uh, let's understand how the Republicans feel about issues that are important to us, too. And, and I think if we, if we start listening and understanding more, we can, we can work on solutions that sometimes are going to be compromises, but that are going to help all of us move forward. And that, that's really what I, what I want to focus on as a state legislator. Sean, it's been a pleasure to have you on the air. Best wishes in your campaign. Thanks a lot, Ron. It was great to be here, too. Thanks for the news you provide to our local community. We are so lucky in Richland County to have so much local news. Not, not all rural areas are this fortunate. Sean Murphy Lopez has been our guest on this portion of the morning show today. Sean is running for the state assembly. He is a Democratic candidate in the 49th Assembly District. Our thanks again to Sean Murphy Lopez for being our guest today.